Star Wars 7x7 episode 2144. Today it's another installment of Star Wars Pop. That's Podcasters on Podcasting. And today I'm talking to the guys from Sixth Scale Scavengers. Punch it! Hey Rebel Rouser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So man, oh (laughs) man, the name of this podcast is a tongue twister for me, but here is the deal. The sixth scale, oh gosh, every time. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I have stopped and started this recording, so we're just going to plow through the sixth scale scavengers. (laughs) podcast is a hot toys collecting podcast with a focus on the Star Wars, Marvel, and DC Comics licenses. The co-founders Brian Fontaine and Chris Letty created the podcast and later their website as a resource for collectors of all experience levels to learn and interact with the collecting community. You'll find checklists and databases of all the hot toys figures released to date with product information, release dates, and helpful links to scavenge your own collecting deals. Now I had the pleasure of meeting Brian and Chris at a Star Wars night at a baseball game. Gosh, it seems like ages ago. And Brian and I actually were at the same Toys R Us for a Force Friday event. This was the one that was tied in to The Last Jedi for 2017. It all seems so long ago. It was wonderful to catch up with them, and I hope you enjoy the conversation with Brian and Chris from Sixth Scale Scavengers. Brian and Chris, thank you so much for joining me on Star Wars 7x7. How are you guys? <laughs> Doing great. Doing great, Alan. Excellent. Yeah. Doing great. Thanks for the invite. Oh, my pleasure. It's good to be talking with you guys again. We were just talking before the recording started about uh, having seen each other at a Fisher Cats Star Wars night game, the local uh, AA baseball team. But gosh, those days seem so far away, not just from like time, but also from actually being within six feet of you and actually shaking your hands <laughs> ain't that the truth man oh my gosh well here's hoping that someday in the not too distant future we can actually do that without social distancing again that would be and wonderful it, and it, it's <laughs> rare to have a, a local new hampshire connection it, it's uh in this community it's there's not too many of us so we we all got to stick together yeah absolutely <laughs> Um, all right. So, um, before we go any further, I'm going to ask the two of you, just since your new voices on the show for a lot of folks, uh, pot quite possibly, um, would you please introduce yourselves and then, um, tell us a little bit about your podcast. You go first, Brian. You talk first. I talk first. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'll start. You're, you're better at talking about our background of our, our podcast, but, uh, I'm Brian Fontaine. Um, I've been doing podcasting on and off for different industries and stuff since about 2009, I think I figured it out. Um, And obviously, most recently with Star Wars and and collecting. So we have our our podcast and our our website, Six Hill Scavengers, and uh, we cover a lot of things, uh, Hot Toys related and and many different franchises. But uh, I'd be remiss to say Star Wars definitely has my heart um, always and... uh, Chris (laughs) Chris <laughs> it certainly does yeah Chris Letty um, again co-host co-founder uh, of six scale scavengers a one six scale hot toys collecting podcast uh, mainly focused on Star Wars full um, and DC I'll squeak that in there um, but uh, yeah we're just uh, glad to be on this episode with Alan our fe- fellow New Hampshire native. So. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian, you did mention that you've been doing podcasting for a while, but um, I'll ask, I guess, the more direct question. How did you get into podcasting in general? And the same goes for you, Chris. Yeah, it's kind of, I'll keep the, the long story short as much as possible, but I, I first got in uh, podcasting. I started my own website, did my own uh podcasts about fantasy football analysis of, of all things. I wow. had always played fantasy football. I decided, hey, I, I must know a little bit. Um, I really befriend, befriended a lot of people in the industry, um, people that worked at you know ESPN and Roto World and a lot of these big sites and ended up eventually writing and, and doing analysis for them, made appearances on Sirius XM radio. So apparently some people out there thought I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> 
but you know my you know fast forward a little bit my son was born uh, I, you know, obviously Chris and I both have full-time day jobs. This is, uh, you know, this, we do it cause we love it. And I was up till four o'clock in the morning, five o'clock in the morning, writing articles, editing. And I just said, you know what? I, I just, this isn't for me. And then more so I, I was writing and doing analysis for people that found the information beneficial. But then as soon as that week was over, it was done. I, I just, I really crave that evergreen content that you can get with, with covering like a, a franchise like Star Wars. And like many of us, uh, once The Force Awakens hit, I was looking for anything. I, I needed to know what was going to happen next. I wanted people to talk about it. I mean, Alan, that's when I found your podcast. Yeah. There's a lot of other good ones out there. And that just whet the appetite. And I would say probably before Rogue One hit theaters, I found myself, um, you know, podcasting about Star Wars myself, which I never thought I would do. I, I <laughs> liked being a fan and part of the audience. And then I decided, well, why don't I join in too? And, you know, before I kick it over to Chris, it was like kind of two things that happened. And I remember getting an email from uh, Devin with Unmistakably Star Wars. And uh, he must have seen me on Twitter. And I went on his show. I think they had a show. I don't know if they're still doing it or not. Star Wars on tap. And you know, we had a really good conversation. And then afterwards, he asked me if I would be willing to do little collecting segments for their show. And I would record a three or five minute sound bites, and they would drop it into their episode. And it, like it was I was part of the, the team. And I did that for a little bit before deciding to go on my own. And then Chris, this is kind of how you and I met of all mm -hmm. chances, uh, the Toy Run podcast, uh, Jake Stevens, Chris B. Um, they had a podcast called Toy Run, and they were looking for Rogue One, the uh, the Force Friday for Rogue One. And I was at the Manchester Toys R Us with my friend Jim, and we did a recording after we were in the store saying what we found for product and stuff. And then that was later played on a Toy Run podcast that then, Chris, you heard, and that's kind of where <laughs> you kind of went to the, the story here. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like, uh, I didn't even really get into even listening to podcasts in general until about 2015. And with all the hype with Force Awakens, I started looking for Star Wars podcasts. And and, and that led to collecting podcasts. And that led to me listening to the Toy Run. And here I, he I hear somebody say, you know, this is Brian Fontaine reporting from Toys R Us in Manchester, New Hampshire. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, what? There's there's other collectors like podcasting in New Hampshire. <laughs> and <laughs> so I uh, I searched, I, I stalked him and uh, <laughs> he, had, he made a website and I, I just emailed Brian and I said, hey, man, you know, like, this is awesome. I'd love to meet up someday. And him and I met up at um, a shop in Exeter, New Hampshire, uh, Krypton, uh, comics and pop culture. And we just kind of hit it off. And, and from there, um, I, him and I kind of joined, uh, the brick city blockade and we just started doing segments and being a part of all the different, uh, shows and, and that sort of thing that we, um, they were they were talking about and and i got a chance to go on unmistakably star wars and and be interviewed and that's kind of how things begun for me i just i never thought i would be into podcasting and here it is uh like over three and a half years later and <laughs> still into it so more so than ever now awesome so what would you say is your favorite thing about being a podcaster and you know perhaps a Star Wars specific podcaster at times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brian, you lead it off. Uh, I mean, for I, I mentioned it, like just being able to have that evergreen content to not worry about, you know, trying to, I, I think just finding a niche within the community to, to cover that and not feel like we have to keep up with every single thing that's happening or everything on social media or every show and stuff. And, and really kind of focusing on like the collecting aspect of it, but certainly enjoying everything as a fan and, and just the community. I, I, like I said, it just that the ability to put something out there and then somebody can listen to it weeks, months later, and it's still relevant, I think is, is really cool. And I mean, star Wars is so huge now. I mean, 
I mean, Baby Yoda, the Mandalorian. I mean, there was nobody under the sun that didn't think that 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 stinking kid was so cute. Uh, even my wife just started watching it recently, and she's uh, completely enamored with it. But it's it's such a common language. You can love different parts of it. You can you can love and hate things. You can walk and talk to somebody if they're a Star Wars fan. I guarantee you can find some some commonality to even if you don't see eye to eye on certain things. I guarantee you you'll find something to have a really good conversation about. Mm-hmm. Even if you have to agree to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just echoing off what Brian said. Uh, it's for for me, it's all about the community being a part of, um, you know, not necessarily not only the podcasting community, but the collecting community, the Star Wars community. Uh, it's it's awesome. I I love just being able to provide content for people uh, to consume and and enjoy. And, and then, I mean, really one of my favorite things is hearing how our podcast has helped in even the smallest way, uh, for, for some of our listeners. And, and I, I mean, it's a really humbling, ex, you know, experience to hear people say that they, uh, you know, they, they listen to what we say and, and they take it to heart. And I mean, that's something that, it's hard to put into words, you know, what it, you know, that, that whole experience. I think you've done a good job putting it into words right there. <laughs> so I uh, imagine I try. this next question probably has uh, two answers these days because obviously, I mean, and it's not even the same for everyone because sometimes we, you know, talk to podcasters who are not in the same city, let alone the same state. And, Mm -hmm. you know, even being in the same state sometimes isn't actually a helpful thing. But um, where do you generally record your podcast and how are you adapting in this coronavirus situation? Yeah, you're good right now. You can't get there from here. That's kind of the how you how we get across to New Hampshire. I know Chris lives uh, on the seacoast and I'm uh, I'm local to the, the Manchester area. You know, Chris, in 45 episodes, I don't think we've done any of these things actually in person. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we're always doing, um, you know, we always we've act, we used to use Google Hangouts and then we got the boot from that. Uh, we found a really good program called StreamYard that allows us to stream our show live right to YouTube. And then we take the audio from that afterwards and then make it available for, for download. But I mean, yeah, you, you hit it, Alan, with technology. Um, it's that we haven't actually missed a beat. Um, with kind of how we record. I, I mean, it, it does, it is a shame that we only live an hour away. I mean, a lot of podcast duos would, would probably kill to have a, a proximity that close. And, and, but we make it work. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Uh, it's, it's tough. I mean, to coordinate and to try to, if we were to try to do it together, I mean, we would, there would be no way we could be as consistent as we are, um, with our releases and, and that sort of thing. But I, like, I, I've got a pretty good setup now. I'm in a new house and I've got the basement to myself and, um, you know, got the blue Yeti mic, got the webcam, got, you know, the dual monitors, got the computer all set up. But, uh, it's mainly just for show because my co-host he does all the heavy lifting with the recording and loading it onto the <laughs> you know all the various platforms and and all that stuff. I just kind of show up and you know <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean I I'd love to be able to do that stuff um down the road, but uh you know, we'll see. We'll see. So what do you guys draw on for inspiration for your podcast? I have a feeling it's probably you know, measured in, you know, a sixth scale, perhaps. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wink, wink, Bingo. nudge, nudge. <laughs> it, it is, but, you know, we mentioned a little bit ago, too. It's so hard to cover everything that's happening with just even Star Wars. You're talking just one franchise and. You know, Chris and I, when we were part of the the Brick City Blockade, uh, it was a great experience. Like Robin Vote and and Sean Michaud, they're they're still uh, going really strong. It was just so hard to keep up with everything. And I think when it when it becomes almost a, a chore to feel like you you have to keep up to date with everything so you can speak with authority on it. And that's really where we started. Okay, well, let's just focus on 
collecting and then we we found these products that are available just like oh my god you see them in person and you're just like i, I can't even believe i'm actually looking at this right now huh. so you know just with the, the love of, of of star wars but then also having those those representations that are available it it's really easy to get excited about it but then furthermore when you look at the landscape of, of what's out there for content of people to consume like when chris and i first you know discovered these uh you know hot toys and there was nothing out there to tell us like more about them there was no like history of what happened it's it's a company based in, in hong kong that they, they do make available um worldwide but there was no websites hardly there was maybe one podcast that had a very irregular uh release schedule uh, i huh. do believe they're still going strong now and then you know we decided look maybe let's make a website and let's gear this towards let's learn with everybody else let's take let's we don't know and we're we claim all the time we're not experts and let's just take everybody along for the journey with us we'll learn we'll make mistakes people can uh you know <laughs> laugh at us they can laugh at our misfortune um like chris said maybe they'll think we give some good advice occasionally but it's it's so fun i mean i i look forward to it we record every two weeks and we record uh tomorrow night from the time we're chatting now and um it's it's just great. I mean, and the community. It's we thought maybe we'd have about ten listeners at when we first got going, and we would do it because we wanted to have the conversations and we want to learn. And now, like, I don't even know how to gauge what our audience is, but it's quite a bit. It it surprises me all the time. Yeah, yeah, it surprises me too. Uh, you know, people uh, listening from all over the world, and uh, again, going back to that humbling feeling um you know people want to tune in and hear what's going on and i mean some of the things we draw on for inspiration is we really look at the landscape of the the six scale community um and man star wars is hot right now so we talk a lot about the star wars figures and um and just kind of play off all you know the, the stuff that we see going on in the community we usually have topics and uh, for each episode, but it's just, uh, you know, we have, uh, we have another co-host TC and, uh, we also have our, we call him our man behind the scenes, uh, Roy, and they've got more experience in this area of collecting than we do. So they help us out with a lot of different topics that they think can help collectors and, and kind of, you know, bring on those discussions with our live chat. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of, you know, we're, we're trying to always find something that can be helpful for collectors. Um, I think you know. one thing too, that we do as well is because we're just focusing on the collecting aspect and we can obviously bring in everything that's, that's happening, like the Mandalorian and the Clone Wars and the movies, but it allows us to have really positive conversations about Star Wars. So we don't draw, we try to keep things as positive as possible. Uh, one of the things that we say about our show all the time is we try to keep it family friendly. I mean, a lot of collectors, um, we, well, it doesn't really happen now because a lot of people aren't commuting with their children in the car, but we always mm. say like, <laughs> if you're driving in the car, you can listen to our podcast and you're not going to worry about improper content or, or bad language or whatnot. So you can, you know, with confidence, you know, be able to listen to that and maybe your children will also get the the collecting bug a little bit. But it it allows us to really talk about our love of these things and keep it positive without having to get into any of the negativity. Because if you're just focusing about things that are from those shows, it's a lot easier than to maybe some of the things that you don't find as as appealing about that. You can kind of craft your conversation in, <laughs> in a really great way. <laughs> well, um, do I also gather, and this is a loaded question because I know the answer to it, having listened to your most recent episode, that I might be partially responsible for you getting back into collecting sequel trilogy items? You can, that you would mail, you would be able to make that, uh, that, <laughs> that conclusion. So, but you know, I, I think that's one great thing about like the community in general is because of the different niches and, and everything that the people cover and, and the way that they cover it, it, it can, that, that the, the love of it and the, the enthusiasm can actually, um, brush off. And I, and I think what Chris alluded to was 
our enthusiasm for this collecting allows people to also get excited about it. And we will get, you know, notifications or emails and say, you know, you guys talked about this one figure and I just, you, you spoke so glowingly about it. And the more I researched it, I had to have it too. And I mean, that, I mean, that's just, that's just really cool. But mm -hmm. one of the things that we started doing recently and only Chris, maybe what, four or five episodes now, we, we kind of mm -hmm. talk about what our, our spark is. So like, you know, from, the Last Jedi, Spark the Rebellion, and, and what's kind of piquing our curiosity. So we use that as our opportunity to kind of talk about what's really cool in fandom at that point without really having to have that collecting bend to it. And uh, yeah. so that's uh, that's what uh, sparked that, uh, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> so what other podcasts, and this is not a fishing expedition on my part, but what other podcasts... <laughs> Do you enjoy both Star Wars and non-Star Wars ones? Whew, that is a tough question. I'm sure I would uh, hopefully not offend anybody by leaving anybody out, but I usually go by what's in my wrote most recently played. Um, obviously, uh, you're I'll, you're fishing. I'll, I'll give you the fish. I, I really enjoy your show, Alan, especially <laughs> with being able to, you know, get little uh, quick little bites of it. But then also. Uh, I, through your podcast, I actually discovered uh, podcast Stardust, which I, I really enjoy. Dennis and Jay, they do a really good job. Just the the way that they approach things and analyze it, it's very it's just a laid back conversation. They they do great. Um, David W. Collins' soundtrack show is probably by wow. far my favorite podcast. I just love when those drop, and it for me, it's the the way that he speaks with such authority on a lot of that. I feel like I learn something every time. And that's probably like my non Star Wars show uh, podcast to listen to. And then some recent ones, uh, Generation Skywalker. Um, that's a really it's a fairly new one. That's really good. And then uh, I'll, I'll leave out the official name here. But Alan, this is local to, to New Hampshire here with uh, um, Recycled Percussion, Chaos and Kindness. Um, Justin Spencer, uh, Crush the F podcast yeah, is actually, okay. uh, <laughs> it's funny that sometimes you just hear the things you need to at the certain points. And, um, that's, that's definitely been a, a recent addition and kind of liking that so far. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I listened to all those ones too, so I'll just copy Brian's, um, <laughs> ah. initial, initial statements there. But so my job, um, I'm in the car all the time traveling all over New Hampshire to all the different hospitals and stuff. So I'm always listening to podcasts. So my podcast list is ridiculous <laughs> on how much I just listen to everything. But uh, yeah, like, like he said, um, I listen to your podcast and um, but I also listen to Bruise and Blasters, um, mm. you know, New England uh, uh, guys, uh, Santa Crawler podcast. Uh, Dan on there is from Massachusetts, so ah. another local. Um, and then the Art of Fatherhood. My buddy Art Eddie um, has a great podcast about just being a father. He interviews people all over, um, from sports to Hollywood, all all over the place. Great information uh, for any fathers or fathers to be. Uh, Marvel Studios News. I love. Marvel MCU. So those guys do an awesome job. A uh, couple more collecting weekly sky talkers, Jedi business talk, galaxy of toys, vintage rebellion, and many more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I just, I love podcasts. I love the, um, the medium and just be able to hear people talk about all kinds of different things. And one of my biggest things is I like listen to podcasts, um, especially star Wars ones where the hosts have very different views on Star Wars than I do. And mm -hmm. I love hearing other people's takes on different things. And it really helps me think outside the box. And it's helped me as a fan big time to really appreciate um, different areas of Star Wars that I had a hard time with. Um, and now I, I just look at things so differently now. And I can find enjoyment out of pretty much any star wars content um that that's out there so that's yeah long list i could i could keep going but i won't bore it i won't bore the listeners <laughs> <laughs> 
not boring at all. No, thank you very much. It's awesome. So considering that you're prolific listeners and also podcasters yourselves, what would you say, in your opinion, is the secret to a great Star Wars podcast? Uh, don't we wish you all knew the answer to that question? <laughs> well, <laughs> I would say trying not to be like everybody else, find a niche and and kind of serve a purpose. You can't be everything to everybody. Um, you certainly don't want to just have controversial opinions to just get listens and, and people talking about it. I, I think people appreciate hosts that are genuine. Uh, you, nobody has to be a know-it-all. Like if you're thinking that I would, you know, if you're sitting here listening to this thinking like, you want to create a Star Wars podcast as well. There's really nothing stopping you. If you're not, if you don't feel like you know everything, it's okay to just focus on one aspect of it, or to say that you don't know. I mean, we, we say that a lot, and and being honest and transparent, I, I think people appreciate that. And and consistency, whether it's your release schedule or your 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 tone or your approach, and and then people feel like they really get to to know you as 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 a person and a host, and you know, finally, I just think, you know, respect yourself, respect your audience. And then, you know, I think just because it's something that, that Chris and I have as um, as a golden rule about the about the audience and, and the, the content, and we we want to be some a, a show that could be listened to for any audience and in any setting. And that's really important to us. Yeah, I mean, I think yes, I mean, anybody can do it. Uh, anybody can come up you know, talk about Star Wars, that it's something that they're passionate about, they love. Um, but I think another important thing, like Brian kind of said, is finding that niche, um, finding an angle that hasn't been exploited a hundred times over. Um, I mean, that's really the, that's the big reason why I, we decided to focus on a specific area, kind of, of the high end Star Wars, Marvel, DC collecting in Hot Toys, because of what Brian said earlier, uh, there wasn't much going on in that, um, with podcasts in, in that area. And, and we're like, okay, we love these products. We, we love star Wars. We love these other franchises. So it's not a reach for us to be able to talk about this stuff, con you know, consistently. Um, and I think that's, that's one big thing. Uh, I feel it's really hard to be passionate and enthusiastic and genuine for things that you have no connection to. So mm -hmm. like when you're just rifling off, um, you know, all the new products that were released, uh, it's great. It, it's informative for the listeners, but, um, when you dive into it to the depth that Brian and I do, uh, we, we would lose that, um, you know, it's just, you're, you're not genuine to yourself. Um, just talking about it. Um, so hopefully, you know, I hope that our passion for this, these products and, and our, these franchises, uh, shines through, you know, for our listeners. Um, just because I get so much enjoyment just talking to Brian and TC and, and, the other guests and stuff that we have on every once in a while. Um, you know, that's, it's just, I hope the listeners feel the same way. Well, I feel like it comes through. So, <laughs> 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 all right. So, um, before we wrap it up, I do have one question, which is sort of a bigger two part question. That's mm -hmm. what is your biggest star Wars podcasting achievement so far? And what is your greatest ambition for the podcast for the future? Oof. Chris, I'll let you go first on this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, for me, um, it's really just having been a creator of a well-liked and reviewed podcast. Um, like I said, I never thought I would even be doing this several years ago and to have something that I enjoy doing and others enjoy. I mean, that's, that's really, um, fulfilling enough for me, but, um, I mean, also just being a part of this podcast community, uh, because I love podcasts so much, I've been able to interact with so many different podcasters, especially at star Wars celebration in Chicago last year. Um, I met 
so many podcasters. It was awesome. I loved it. Um, also going to local cons and meeting up with dork layer guys and the bruise and blasters guys and, and just being able to hang out and, and converse and, and, uh, you know, we instantly have that connection when we all love star Wars, but we also do this thing that's, you know, we can talk about and, um, and I just look forward to more, more interactions like that going forward. I hope we can do more stuff in person. Uh, you know, once we kind of get through what's going on right now, but, um, you know, and just meet our listeners. And so, and then going forward, Brian and I just want to devote more time and effort into building up our website, providing as much, as much help, uh, to hot toys collectors, uh, as we can, uh, you know, we're just the possibilities, you know, or, you know, it's cliche or endless. We can put in as much time and effort as we, we want and just be an outlet for collectors. I mean, that's, that's really, that's it for me. You said a lot of it, Chris. Uh, I personally, <laughs> yeah. I, I know that, uh, there's, there's several, um, you know, actors and, and voice act over actors and stuff that, are, that do a lot of shows, but personally, um, with, with Robin, uh, Vogt being able to interview Stephen Stanton was, and still is a, as a highlight. Uh, Stephen is such a wonderful person and is very, uh, generous with his time. And, and he did, um, well, I don't know if he did it while we were actually recording, but afterwards I know he did, um, a bunch of sound bites for us um, in, a, in his different voices with Admiral Radis and um, AP5. That used to be a, a big. Uh, we were big fans of AP5 with with the Brick City. So that that was so so cool. That's fun. And then my my wife still makes fun of me for this, but we were in Walt Disney World <laughs> last year, and I had the opportunity to meet uh, two of our listeners. And my wife just could not believe the fact that we had we had fans and where we were like, occupation. <laughs> so I, I carved out a little time, uh, to talk to, um, two of our listeners and like, they must have thought it was kind of cool, but I was just in awe that not only did they want to take time out of their day and go out of their way to, to meet up where I was, but then I just, I really enjoyed getting to know them and, and listening to, to like their stories and, and whatnot. And I mean, Chris and I, we, we try to stay humble about this. We don't have any huge egos. I mean, we're just regular guys, just like everybody else. We just mm -hmm. happen to like Star Wars and, and like collecting. And, and I, I, that, that part, I'll echo what Chris said about the community. I mean, that is one thing that I'll, I just enjoy. And it's one of the reasons why we keep coming back for more. Awesome. So for anybody who wants to keep coming back for more of your show, where should they go to find it? Oh, God, Chris, I usually give the plug. So whenever, uh, <laughs> I know you do. <laughs> I usually get a big deep breath. And um, <laughs> so we have, our, we have our website, sixskillscavengers.com, where we post all the episodes. And we have a really good checklist and, and a database for anybody that wants to learn more about, about hot toys. So we can go there. I mean, we have a Facebook page. We try to, we don't do too much on social media. Um, we have our YouTube channel. Uh, we do all of our shows streaming live and people can watch and interact with us, but then also, you know, all the, the typical Apple podcasts, Google play stitcher. Um, I'm probably missing a few just cause I'm not in my <laughs> normal routine, but, uh, we're on, it's, it's on lips and you can find us there and throw that in your, uh, podcast catcher of choice excellent chris anything yep. last to add for that list yeah i mean just uh you know our own personal um instagram twitter i'm at vintage viewport brian's at jedi scavenger sw um you know we we do other things there but uh yeah just you know we just try try to do what we can as far as uh social media interacting with with listeners and uh it's it's almost like a full-time job and i'm sure you understand that uh <laughs> very much um but uh it's it's definitely worth it awesome well brian chris thank you so much for joining me on the show today i really appreciate it congratulations on your success and here's to lots more of it thank you alan thank you alan appreciate it 
not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox. This is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other related Star Wars items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademarks and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2019 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.